Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Are you ready to discover some niche business ideas that actually work? Well, it's time for a motivational kick to jumpstart your next big idea. Here's your host, Spencer Haas. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Today, I have Benny Sue on the show. He's a very interesting entrepreneur who hit it big with a photo iPhone app. In addition, he's a blogger, consultant, and a fan of the movie Shawshank Redemption. Uh, today, I'm going to pick his brain a bit about his iPhone app success and what he has planned for the future. Now, I have to confess that this show is a bit of a selfish uh, thing on my part because I'm getting some free consulting as I seek to launch my own iPhone app here in the near future. So let's dig right into it. Benny, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on, and thank you for that uh, intro. Yeah, no, I appreciate your time very much. Uh, I'm very interested to sort of pick your brain here and figure out sort of the secrets uh, that you have in regards to iPhone apps. Um, so let's sort of, before we dig into sort of the strategies of iPhone apps and before I get too selfish and ask about what I should be doing, I want to know a little bit about your own background. Um, maybe you can just tell us about what sort of schooling and career path that you had before you ever created your iPhone app. Um, sure. Um, I, I basically, I had a pretty normal um, schooling. I went to the University of Florida uh, I majored in sports management because I really didn't know what else to major in. So um, at the time, I loved sports, and I thought, well, that sounds like a cool major. Um, and um, after college, I just um, I stumbled upon working in the family restaurant business because at the time, I didn't know what else to do. So I started helping out and, like, bussing tables. And, um, you know, now I've been there for, I think, over – See, it's been like over 10 years now, um, off and on, um, because I, I kept trying to figure out what I wanted to do out of, in, in my life, and I didn't know what kind of career I wanted. I've done a few different internships. Uh, I've lived overseas, and I've sort of always um, kind of fallen back on the restaurant because um, it's family and you know it's a steady paycheck, but you know that wasn't it isn't really what I wanted to do in my life. And that's why I started looking into um, different ways of making money. And that's how I got into creating iPhone apps. Okay, very good. So just to get sort of a time frame, you say you've been working there for 10 years on and off. Mm -hmm. So did you graduate around uh, 2001, 2002, yeah. something yeah, like 2000, that? Yeah, uh, 2000, graduating in 2000. So in 2000. A, yeah. Okay. And uh, did you grow up there in Florida? I did. I born and raised in Florida. Yes. Okay. So very good. So uh, have been uh, basically there in Florida for uh, quite a while. Sounds like most of your life, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. They're working at the the family business, family restaurant there. But uh, you're looking to do something a little bit more. And before we get directly into the iPhone app, um, as with all of us, we all have sort of looked at lots of different business ideas or ventures that we could possibly go into. Uh, did you have any business ventures before you created your iPhone app? I definitely did. Um, you know, it's probably like started around five years ago when I started to get burnt out from working at the restaurant and I started to explore other ways to um, generate income. And, you know, I spent a lot of time online um, anyways, and I, I got interested in, into blogging and I saw how people were making money um, in different ways online. So I definitely tried different things such as affiliate marketing. I tried um, for a while PPC um and I tried uh, niche websites and, um, you know, I, I did it for like a month or two and then I quit because um, I wasn't seeing like, you know, a lot of money coming in at the time. I didn't really give it enough um, effort. And also I just sort of burnt out. I mean, it wasn't really interesting to me. Back then I was just thinking about like how much money can I make? And um, that was my main focus. And that's probably why I didn't really continue on. Um so, you know, I've tried different blogs. I've tried to create different uh, topics on blogs and hoping it would turn into like this um, full-time business for me. But again, I found um, different topics I wasn't really, really interested in. And so, you know, those blogs have um, long gone. So, uh, but I've tried. Yes, I've, I've tried different things. Yeah, no, it uh, it's interesting to sort of hear the background as well. I think that a lot of people can relate with that. I know myself that I've created lots of sites before I had any, you know, sort of successful web business. And uh, sounds like, 
you know, you sort of experience the same thing. You know, people go through a lot of failures. They try lots of different things. And maybe that's a lesson for people listening is that, hey, not everything you you try is going to be a success. I mean, that's, uh, doesn't really happen for anybody. Um, so let's then sort of move on, or maybe you can give us a transition of how you went from trying out things like affiliate marketing and creating blogs to then sort of moving into iPhone apps. What, what sort of made you think along those lines to even try something like that? Um, good question. Um, yeah, for, after I I kind of quit, um, trying those different other different ways to make money online, I kind of had this, you know, dry period where, you know, I kind of felt stuck in life and, um, I had been a a fan of the iPhone since day one. So I've always had an iPhone and I've, you know, been downloading apps and using them. And I started to, you know, get this idea where, you know, I wanted to create my own iPhone app. And I thought that'd be kind of a cool thing to do. Well, I wasn't really thinking money. I just thought that'd be something cool to have. But um, I had two problems. I, I didn't have an idea. And also, I didn't know how to program at all. And I thought about learning how to program. And I, I picked up a couple books at the bookstore and tried to read a few pages. But I mean, the, the language was so over my head that I thought, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to learn how to program an iPhone app. And so the idea of creating one was put aside for a little bit. And it was about, I would say, it was in 2010, like around October, when I came across Pat Flynn's um, blog, which I'm sure many of uh, your readers are familiar with. And I came across, I think it was a, a podcast where he talked about how he had this iPhone app business and how he outsourced everything. And I thought that was amazing because, you know, I, now I had this way I can create an iPhone app. I just had to outsource the work. So I, I tried to come up with an idea. And the idea for my iPhone app just c- sort of came upon me because I was using this photo app for, I think, a couple of months. And um, it was it's kind of similar to my app now. I just It's just kind of the same idea. But I noticed that app could have... Um, wasn't really polished. Um, you could tell it was done by a programmer who, who was very, very smart, but he didn't really focus in on the design of the app. And I thought like it could be done better and it could look better. So um, I just that's I took an existing idea and just made it better. And that's how I came up with the idea for my Photo 365 app. Very cool. So you sort of uh, yeah, you went over uh, a lot of details there, of course. Being an iPhone user, you were interested in apps, and mm-hmm. so you started playing around with the idea of creating your own. And then, uh, you know, sort of thanks to Pat Flynn showing the way that, hey, you can outsource this. You don't have to do everything yourself. Uh, there is the possibility of actually creating an app. Um, exactly. So, so maybe you can give us an idea just quickly. What is Photo 365? Uh, what does it do? It's um, it's kind of it's a it's a photo app, obviously. And it, what you do is you take a picture, and you save one picture per day. So um, you know, I know in in a span of a day, you may take ten or you know however many pictures, but you you're supposed to just pick one picture and save it, and you just do that over and over again. And if you you know stick with it, by the end of the year, you should have three hundred and sixty five photos to look back on and, and you know, re- remember your year in photos, basically. So um, it's a popular project online. If you go searching online, there's a lot of websites um, talking about it and, and groups that, of people doing it. So um, it's, it's a really perfect app for the iPhone because so many people use their iPhone as their main camera now. And it's, um, it's a way for them to organize their photos into one app. And it, it, it really simplifies it because it's just one photo per day. Yeah, that's a pretty cool idea. It's almost like uh, keeping a you know personal record or whatever you want to call it of what happened during the year. You can sort of look back at your photos and very quickly and easily see what you did, what you were up to this year. Um, and uh, so I, I think it's a great idea. And I think... Part of it that's interesting about this story is that it doesn't have to be some 
grandiose complex idea if you know if I may say that I think it's a mm-hmm. great idea but mm-hmm. part of the beauty of it is in the simplicity of it that it's, people know how to use it it's easy exactly and that's um you know I it's it's a a lot of people when they create apps they they want to think of something you know unique this this revolutionary idea but most of the time you know it just just create something simple and, and or just take an existing idea and just make it better um, it's it's a lot of people have done that in the app store and they've become successful because of it. So you know, um, if you want to create an app, don't think of creating the next you know Instagram or the next Facebook. You know, something that has never been done before. Just take take an idea and, and improve on it. And that's I think that's really helped me in the beginning too because um, I didn't you know I, I, the the photo 365 market was in the app store already. I mean there were other apps doing it but i just decided i i could do it better so there was an existing market already for those kind of apps yeah that's some great advice um maybe you can give us a quick overview of the life of the app itself from i you know the moment you had the idea to actually selling your first copy um sure i'll I'll try to um give you the short short version of it um i had (laughs) I had the idea around, I think it was like the fall, like around October, like I said, and um, um, I started learning about outsourcing. Uh, I bought an ebook that Pat had mentioned uh, that because I had never outsourced anything before. And uh, January, I had um, hired my developer, and in early February, we started working on it. And originally, they had said it would take about a, one and a half months to complete the project, but it ended up taking, I think, six to seven months. To finish, which um, which I I expected a delay because that's what the you know, people, the author of the ebook mentioned, but I didn't expect it to take that long. But you know I was okay with that, um, and they were okay with that. They didn't really push me. They weren't trying to say hey, let's hurry up and finish. So um, it it was released on in in August uh, August 11th I believe um, was the very first day it was um, available in the App Store. What were some of the delays? I mean, were it things on the developer's end? Were there things on your end? Why did it take so long? Um, good question. It was um, probably more on my end because – and probably a little bit of both. But I would say um, for me, I, it, um, for a while – because it was such because it was such a long process that I've sort of kind of got a little bit lazy in the middle of it. Like, you know, they would send me an update, and I was supposed to take a look at – this recent update, test it out, and then give them feedback on it. And you know, sometimes it take me a, a week to get back and and give them the feedback. So um, part of it was me, just because in the middle of it, I lost a little bit of motivation. You know, at the beginning, of course, you know, I got really excited by it, and by the middle, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, let me, uh, I gotta do this again. I gotta check out the new update. I gotta do this. So um, part of it was probably just me, just you know, being slow to respond and. I think also them a little bit too because sometimes I would you know send a reply to them and they would take two or three days to get back to me, so it was a little bit on both ends. But um, you know they were sort of I think new too at the time, but now um, I'm still working with them and now they're much better with you know the response time. Yeah, no, that's that's some good insight there. And just me personally having worked on other software projects and now you know actually working on an iPhone app project I can tell you that that's pretty typical as far as you know things don't always go exactly as planned as far as schedule there are things that either come up or you have uh, new ideas or mm-hmm. um, you know things change and so I think that that's pretty typical sort of what you explain there is um, just there are there's a lot of delays uh, along the whole process I wanted to uh, sort of dig a little bit deeper about about the actual design of the app. Did you just hire one developer to sort of do everything, or did you have a separate graphic designer help you out? Um, because that's really sort of two elements, the actual programming of it and then the actual look uh, of the app itself. Um, for this app, um, I uh, I got lucky because um, the, the developing, the, the company I hired has, an in, in, in-house graphics team. So they did the graphics and the programming all, you know, in-house. So that made it easier for me um, because I didn't have to be kind of like the middleman between, you know, a graphic a graphic developer and the programmer. So 
they did all the graphics as well. And um, I was comfortable with them doing the graphics because I had seen their portfolio before I hired them. And I re was really impressed with what they had done. And if I wasn't impressed, I would have gone and hired a different group to do the graphics and then um, hired them to do the programming. Yeah, no, that's that's good. I know that uh, there are a lot of teams that do that uh, together and then, um, you know, other people like to do it separate. So you, you can certainly go either way there. I don't know if you have answered this on your, your blog. I do read uh, your blog and was wondering about the overall cost to create the app itself. Uh, is that something you're comfortable sharing? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I have shared it on my blog, but I'm more than willing to share it again here. Um, my app cost um, $1,900 to develop. Um, that was the quote I got from them at the beginning, and it was based on how many hours it would take to develop. And, um, you know, that cost never changed throughout. They never added, you know, saying, you know, it would cost more because we're doing more work. But it was $1,900. No, very good. So... You invested nineteen hundred dollars. What have you gotten out of it? You know how how successful has the app been? <laughs> well, you know my my goal when I developed my app was just to make my money back because you know it was um, it was this was going to be a learning experience and I was just hoping to make my money back because at the time that was a lot of money to me and you know I had to really think about it. well you know do I really want to spend almost two thousand dollars on an app? But um, luckily for me, it's paid off um, to date. Um, and this is, I haven't shared this number anywhere yet, not even on my blog. So this is like, you know, um, this is only for your audience now. Um, I've earned $56,000 from the app to date. That's impressive. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a surprise. I'm still, you know, shocked by, you know, what's become of the app. Yeah, that's a, a pretty significant return on investment there on $1,900, um, to, to be sure. That's uh, that's sort of what it's all about, I think, for people out there listening. is That's at least the potential that uh, mm -hmm. these, these iPhone apps can have. Um, so I know that I'm sure early on uh, you did quite well. Yeah, I, I know mm -hmm. that uh, you got App of the Week, and there's lots of downloads initially. Maybe you can tell us what that sort of feel like, feels like to have that early success there. Um, it it, it completely took me by surprise because it happened so fast. I was just when when it came out, I was just hoping for sort of like a, a consistent level of maybe like fifty dollars a day. I would have been happy with. But um, the first week, um, the first weekend, I made like nine hundred dollars, which you know completely blew me out of the water. And so from there, like it just kept going up and up. Um, the second week, my app was out. I was featured in um, New and Noteworthy, which is you know, pretty much like the front page of the app store. And um, not only was I featured on new and noteworthy, but I was featured kind of like above the fold, you know, as we say in, in for websites. So right. um, you go into, you go into the app store, boom, there's my app right there in the second spot. So that got me, um, I think I was making like a thousand dollars a day um, during that time. And, <laughs> I mean, That's it awesome. was, a, it was amazing. Cause you know, it's just, I, I, you know, I was happy. I would have been happy with fifty dollars a day, and here I was making a thousand dollars a day. And um, you know, I thought, you know, this is great, and this is going to be it because you know it's only going to be featured for a week. But then um, that I was featured on the Thursday, and then that Tuesday, I got an email from the Apple marketing team saying um, that they wanted art assets for my app to use in a possible advertising campaign and you know i was like what you know what is this email like is this real is this a joke and so i sort of did a google search and i really didn't find much information about it but i, I um i went onto this uh, developers forum where i had been a regular and um i asked about it and they said yeah that's you know that's legit you know don't don't ignore it so <laughs> uh, <laughs> so i had less than 24 hours to get them you know the graphics that they wanted and they couldn't guarantee that they were going to use it. They just wanted it in case. And so I submitted it on a Wednesday. And then Thursday, um, I checked the app store and I saw that I was app of the week, which um, which is like the holy grail for the app store. I mean, that's where, you know, every app, you know, aspires to be. So, um, you know, that was, you know, just thinking about it kind of makes me smile again because um, it was like I hit the lottery, basically. And um 
So during that time, I was making over like two thousand dollars a day for, um, when I was app of the week. Wow. And um, yeah, I, I couldn't sleep every night. I couldn't sleep because I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't wake up. I couldn't wait to wake up in the morning and check my stats. You know, so it was a really exciting time um, for me. And um, so I was doing like, oh yeah, about two thousand dollars a week that week. So, and um, I my highest um, that week was uh, let me look here, two thousand nine hundred twenty-seven dollars and forty-four cents was my highest day ever, and that was when I was app of the week. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, in one day, you almost doubled your, you know, investment that you had of nineteen hundred dollars there. Um, that that's very impressive. Yeah, it's, it's it's you know it's um it's something I'll never forget for as long as I live for sure. No matter you know how many apps I have, and you know, and if I'm lucky enough to get to that level again, which I don't know if I will, but it's something that I'll certainly never forget. No, thanks for sharing that. That is uh, not only very uh, educational, it's very inspirational um, to, to listen to. So, no, I appreciate that. Now, obviously, at the beginning of any app is sort of the initial rush. That's usually when you mm -hmm. sort of have the big downloads, from what I understand. Um, it's been a little while since you released the app. Um, maybe you can tell us, uh, remind us exactly how long it's been now since you released the app and, and how is it performing now? Um, it's been since uh, uh, August, so how many months is that now? August, so that's four plus four, so like eight months, I think. About eight months, am yeah, I right? Yeah, eight or nine months. That sounds yeah, about right. Yeah, eight or nine months, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's been eight or nine months, and um, I, I, I knew after app of the week, uh, I would certainly it would certainly go down. I mean, I, um, um, but it kind of slowly and slowly, slowly went down. And Christmas time it picked up because Christmas time is – like the biggest time of the year in terms of app sales. Um, that's where a lot of developers see um, a majority of their sales. Um, so after Christmas, it sort of went back down. And now it's kind of hovering. It's been between like $30 to $50 a day, I would say, um, consistently. And that's with me not doing anything, any sort of marketing, any sort of promotion. That's just... Um, people finding my app, maybe word of mouth. So it's, it's sort of hit that $30 to an up level right now. Yeah, which is a pretty nice, uh, you know, little income that you can have sure. there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, basically on a passive income basis now, it sounds mm -hmm. like 30 to $50 a day is uh, no small amount. It's, it's definitely nice to have. Um, so why do you think that your app was so successful? What was it about it? Um, that's, that's a good question. I think, I think first of all, um, people were drawn to my app because of how it looked. Um, the design of it was really, it looked like, you know, a typical, you know, Apple app that you would see in the app store, like a, a really polished, really finished look to it. And also it, it was in the photo, um, category and, um, you know, a lot of the top apps now are photo apps. There's a lot of camera apps. A lot of photo editing apps that people love to use um, because, like I said earlier, the iPhone has is becoming everyone's main phone or I'm sorry, main camera right now. So I I, um, I sort of stumbled upon a category which um, you know there's a lot of money in it, and so um, I, but I definitely think design um, definitely got definitely helped get it featured by Apple. Um, if it looked like crappy, if it looked average, I don't think Apple, well, Apple definitely wouldn't have featured it in newer, new and noteworthy, or even app of the week. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah, definitely. So a, des a design and just the simple, you know, just the simple idea behind it. It wasn't, you know, didn't have a lot of di different features. It was just take a photo, save a photo, repeat. You know, and you could share it if you want, and that's all it was. That's all it was. So it, I kept it simple at first. No, that's great. I think those are some great points uh, for sure out there. Now, I'm about to release my own iPhone app mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, in a totally different category uh, and everything. But but I am interested in knowing more about marketing uh, for iPhone apps because sort of the way I view it is you create a great product, you release mm -hmm. it on the App Store, and it's almost out of your control. Uh, you know, people will find it or they won't find it. Um can you tell us anything about marketing that maybe you did for Photo 365? 
Yeah, um, I can I can share a little bit about that. Um, but what's funny is that for Photo 365, I didn't do any marketing at all for it. And I know that's you know probably what people don't want to hear. But when it came out, I just remember the first day I I sent a you know tweet out to my Twitter followers. I mentioned it on Facebook, and and that was it. Um, I had some um, app review blogs um, email me wanting to do a review. And so I sent them a promo code and um, they did a review. But I had maybe, I think maybe less than 10 for sure, maybe just five um, different websites contact me to do a review um, for it. But I, I, but um, one way I think that helped with too was I um, I definitely made it, because um, when you when you create your app, when you, um, you know, upload it to the App Store, you can put in keywords or you have to put in keywords um, for your app. And, um, you know, the app store is almost like Google search. You know, people will, if they're looking for a certain app, they're going to type it in. And, you know, you want your keywords to match up with what people are looking for. So, um, I mean, I know you're really good with, you know, coming up with popular keywords and things like that. So I definitely went on, you know, I think the Google keyword tool and I just typed in like what people were searching for in terms of, you know, my app. So, um, I definitely targeted it at photo 365 because that seemed like a popular search phrase. So that's why I came up with the name photo 365. You know, my main keyword was photo 365. And then, you know, I also came up with other keywords as such as like 365 calendar, 365 project, and just different um, variations of it. Um, but um, there's, um, but you, back to your question about marketing. You can definitely. I, I would advise you to definitely um, reach out to those app review blogs um, that do it for free, and try to get them to do a review of your app. Um, most of the time, they just ask for a promo code. But um, there are also paid ones where you can um, pay like a hundred dollars for them to do a review on your app, and those I would probably stay away from because, from what I've read, those aren't really that effective. Um, I've, like I said, I've been on this uh, developers forum where people have tried to, you know, pay websites to review their apps. And when the app went live, they checked their stats and nothing. I mean, no difference, no, no, you know, increase in sales, nothing. So I would certainly stay away from paid reviews and certainly focus more on the free reviews. That's some great advice. Um, overall, I, I think, yeah, the one thing you can do with your app that you've sort of touched on is that you can position it well, at least mm -hmm. as, as far as your marketing. You can control, obviously, the price that you put the app up for. You can control how the app looks and feels, which is a big part of the marketing, I guess, there. And mm -hmm. then the keywords um, that you have, just like you would for search engine optimization on a website, you can um, be listed in the app store for certain keywords. And so that's very important uh, to do there as well. But um, yeah, I guess what you're saying overall is that as far as more traditional marketing, as far as going out and sort of knocking on the doors and drumming up business that way, uh, there you know, wasn't a lot of that involved for yours. And maybe there, there isn't a lot that you can do necessarily uh, for a lot of apps uh, that are out there. Yeah, this, I mean, you know, there's different um, you know, there's different services out there that will, you know, try and help you market your app or you know, guarantee a certain position. And I, I've never, you know, dabbled in those. I don't know if they work or not. But there's, you know, you know, services out there for it. I know a lot of uh, developers sometimes go through the uh, uh, press release route. You know, they release a press release for their app, and that's that's something I may try for my next couple apps. Um, is is to do a press release and see how it is because I don't think the cost is really that high to do a press release. But um, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, there's definitely different ways. I mean, there's you know people do advertising on on websites. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways. But um, my advice would be to make the you know best app that you can, and and you know word of mouth and and searches are always always very helpful to get your app noticed. Yeah, that's some great advice there. And you mentioned sort of uh, new app ideas. We're going to get to that here in a second because I am interested to hear what you have maybe down down the road a bit. But um, overall, hearing about your success with mm -hmm. Photo 365 is definitely very motivational 
um, and makes me want to get into the market. Um, but is there sort of a dark side to the business? Is there anything that's um, maybe more difficult about owning an iPhone app that maybe everybody else doesn't know about? Yeah, it's um, it's it was it's very it was very interesting at the beginning because um I was kind of thrown into you know into this when it you know took off. Um, one of the hardest thing things has been, I guess I guess the emails. Um, you know uh, I started getting a lot of emails from users and, you know I've gotten you know great emails from them, but I've also gotten a lot of emails for suggestions, you know ways to make it better. And I certainly appreciate, you know, people taking the time and sending in these suggestions. But the problem is, is that it's I can't please every single person. You know, I can't add every single feature that they want. So um, it's been hard to sort of um, please every single person. And I have a great example of that. Um, if um, that I want to share, it's like um, when I when I came out with the app, and like the first couple months, I kept getting emails from people saying, you know, I love the app. And, but I would love to be able to save more than one picture a day. You know, if you could just do that, it would be, you know, even better. And um, I kind of hesitated because the idea was to just save one picture a day. And that's it. I mean, I know people take more, but, you know, you can only save one picture. So I sort of put it off, but I kept getting more and more emails about it. And I was like, really? People really want more pictures in a day, you know? And I thought, okay, well, if, you know, if that's what they want, you know, I'll give it to them. So I had my developers um, create, a, you know, make the app save more than one picture a day. And um, you know, I even put it on my Facebook um, fan page, saying, hey, you know, I'm working on more than one picture a day. And people were like, yeah, that's awesome, you know, that's great. So I thought, well, this is going to be good. And so um, I create the update, I put it out there, and then I started to get emails back. And the emails were from people who loved the original idea for the app. They said, I loved how it was just one photo a day. I hate that you can save more than one picture now. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, so I completely forgot about, you know, those people who just love one photo a day. And, you know, I thought that the majority would want more than one photo because that's what I was hearing from. And so now I was getting all these emails saying, you know, I loved your app, but now I hate it. I can't use it anymore. You know, it, it, it's I don't want to save more than one picture a day. I just want to save one. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I, you know, I've made such a big mistake. So um, I had to fix that. And now it, there's a feature, there's an option in there where you can save one picture a day or you can save multiple pictures a day. And I figured that was a way to kind of um, make both sides happy. But if I could go back, I would I would just leave it at one picture a day, no matter people, you know, saying, you know, they wanted more than one. So getting suggestions from people was was challenging because, you know, I had this idea for an app, but I also need to listen to feedback from the users. And so it was hard to figure out what I should add and what I shouldn't add. And um, um, one more thing about what was difficult about, you know, what the dark side of it, it was just the complaints. You know, people would send in saying, um, you know, this is not working. My app keeps crashing. I can't upload to Facebook. And for me, that was frustrating because I couldn't really do anything about it. Like, I'm not a programmer. Um, if there was a problem, I would just tell my developer about it, saying, hey, this needs to be fixed. And they would fix it. But, you know, the turnaround time was so long. I mean, it would be maybe one or two months before I could get an update back into the app store. So um, not having, not being able to, you know, go into the code and fix it right away was um, a little bit hard to deal with at the beginning because I want everyone to have a good experience with the app. I don't want people having problems with it. Um, so I've sort of accepted that, you know, it's um, accepted that and tried to, you know, make them understand, you know, just be patient. We're working on the update um, because it's out of my hands. So. Um, but those things were are, are the dark side of it. It's part of the app business, um, so I've come to accept it. But at first, it was pretty overwhelming. Yeah, you know what the problem is is that you just care too much about your customers. It sounds mm -hmm. like. <laughs> yeah, definitely. you know you're trying you're trying to uh, and and I'm of course being facetious there. You should definitely care about your customers. <laughs> um, you know, obviously you want to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. um, as far as updates that you want that you know that they need that things aren't working, you want to get those fixed as quickly as possible. And I'm familiar with this in my own business because I do own some software and I know how frustrating that can be to 
uh, see that somebody has a bug, you know, in the software or in the app that you have, and it just takes some time, um, mm -hmm. you know, before you can get the new version out or whatever that may be. So, um, but also listening to customers, you know, it seems like that, you know, you took the right approach, it seems like, to sort of change the way the app worked based on the feedback that you were getting, mm -hmm. sort of looking back at that and sort of thinking about what you might do in the future, is there a way to determine what sort of feedback you should take from customers and what sort of feedback you should just make an executive decision to say, no, we're not going to do that? Any advice there? Um, I, w I would say like if, if well, <laughs> my first advice would be to see how often you get that feedback. But you know, um, at the same time, you have to be careful too, because I kept getting emails about, you know, I want more than one picture a day, and but and I did, and then it kind of backfired on me. So, um, but that's one way to do it, just to see what people keep asking for. Um, right. um, if it's like a one 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 time email, like um, then I cause I sort of say, okay, well, you know, I'll keep that in mind, but I, I kind of push it off to the side. Um, but I would say just just um, you know. If you have a vision for your app, just just stick with it, you know, even though because you're not going to be able to make every single person happy with it. I mean, it's just impossible. So if you have a vision for your app and what you want to do uh, and stick with it, I mean, that's that's what I would do if I could go back in time now. I would just stick with, you know, making it one photo a day. And those people who who don't like it and want to save more than one picture a day, you know, my app isn't for them, you know, you know, unfortunately. But, you know, I just want to keep those who um, love that feature, happy. Um, so that's, yeah. that's what I would say, yeah. Those are some great points, some great advice, definitely. Um, now, you mentioned a little bit earlier that you do have some plans for some additional apps uh, that you hope to develop. Uh, is there anything you can share with us here um, about what you might be interested in creating? Um, I, I, I have a couple apps right now in development. Um I'm not gonna like reveal like what they are because I I, I just want to make sure they're gonna be um, I guess working okay and kind of like in the right direction and I'm happy with it before I put it out there. And that's totally so, understandable. Yeah, but I mean it's not like it's it's not like a big secret or anything. I guess I just don't want to jinx it. I guess. <laughs> sure, sure, no problem. Um, but they're definitely in the in the I guess lifestyle category again. I mean they're not. It's not a game. It's not like um some fart application or anything like that. <laughs> It's something I hope will enhance the person's lives, something that will entertain them, something they'll find useful. Okay. And so you, you say you have two that are in development right now? Uh-huh. Yeah, I have two uh, right now in development. They're kind of, you know, I started them basically at the same time because I, I came up with the, um, both of the ideas. So one, I'm working with the team that, that did Photo 365, and the other one, I, I hired a new team to, um, to work on that. Mm -hmm. And when do you expect that uh, these apps would be available for um, purchase? Uh, looking, um, see, today's the 24th. Sometime next month, I would say, um, you know, of course, like we were saying, you know, expect delays, right? So uh, probably May, June, they should be ready. May, June, around there. Sounds good. So it's coming up uh, here pretty shortly. Um, very good. So, yeah, I won't dig any deeper sort of into those existing apps um, that are under development here. But for anybody out there that is looking to develop their own iPhone app or that's really just looking for an idea, uh, do you have any advice for how to brainstorm for ideas? Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. It's uh, That's one of the hardest things is like coming up with an idea. But um, my advice would be to take a look in the App Store and, and see like what um, – um, you know, what, what are the apps that really do well? And then um, see, you know, if there's a if there's a way to make that app better. Um, like, for example, like, again, you know, I just took an existing app um, and I decided, well, you know, I can do this a lot better. I can make it look better. I can add different features that the other app doesn't have and um, and put it out there. So I would say, you know, download apps, you know, and see what apps you use right now. Because I was using that app for two months, and then one day I realized, you know what? I, I could do this better. So see what you're doing, what you're using now, and then see if there's a way to improve on it. And then um, also, yeah, if, if you have an idea for an app, I would suggest going into the App Store 
and doing a search and see if there are other apps um, in that um, market you that you want to get into. And, um, you know, don't worry if there are other apps that you want, you know, in that area, because that's that's a good sign. It's the same thing, I guess, if you're creating, you know, niche websites, right? You want competition because then, you know, there's a market, there's people out there for it. Um, if there's not anyone doing an app like you want to do, you know, if it's your first app, I probably would stay away because, you know, you're you're trying to go into this new territory and, you know, it's it, it may fall flat on its face. So try and see if there's other apps in the area you want to do. And if there are, what I would suggest is, and this is what I did, is to go into the app and read the reviews. See what people want. See what's not working for the app. And then that gives you ideas to help make it better when you do it. Um, uh, and also, like, if you go into a, if you have this idea and you go and look and there's, there are, like, you know, great apps for it. You know, if you don't, if you don't think you can do it better, then I would stay away from that idea and go on to something else because you're not going to like make the next um let's say instagram you're not going to make the next angry bird you know those have been done and those have been done well but um you know just you keep keep brainstorming see if there's a um see if there's a problem you have you know like like for your app you know i think it's a great idea because um you're able to check your google adsense account on your iphone you know like if you're out and about um, so the, you know, that's a problem that's a, you know, help solve a, a certain problem. So, um, and if you want more ideas, you can ask around, ask your friends, you know, um, you know, what is it that you wish, you know, or just listen, you know, see what problems they have, you know, or like, I wish my iPhone could do this, or I wish my iPhone could do that. And, you know, that could be your next idea as well. Yeah, no, those are some great points. Definitely. Uh, for people that are out there looking to brainstorm for some iPhone app ideas. Um, certainly you want to make sure that there is at least a market there um, mm -hmm. when you create an app. Um, on the flip side, and you did mention this, of course, a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, Angry Birds and Instagram, there's, you know, some huge apps that you probably don't want to compete against, at least directly. Um, is there anything, any categories or any types of apps that you would tell people to just probably avoid altogether? Um, that's a good question. Um, I know, like, I mean... I'm trying, I'm trying to think right now. I mean, like flashlight, flashlight apps. I don't. I would stay away from that. Actually, I don't even know if you can create a new flashlight app anymore because there were so many flashlight apps for a while that um, I think they. I think Apple stopped doing that. Um, you know, you don't want to make like a cheap knockoff either. You don't want to. You know, there's like Fruit Ninja, and you don't want to make it like, you know, um, I don't know, like, I don't know, what what what's what what can you chop up like. Um, and a vegetable ninja. I mean, well, actually, there is a vegetable ninja, I think. But you, do, you know, um, you know, for example, there's like Angry Bird. But I saw there was an app called Angry Turds. You know, so it's like <laughs> okay. a piece of turd. You know, like Angry Bird. It's just a really right. bad knockoff. So you don't want to do that either. Um, I don't know. I mean, just I mean, you don't want to like try to compete with like camera apps. You know, like um, like Camera Plus. I mean, that's. It's in the top 10 consistently. So, um, but I mean, there are other apps like, you know, camera apps that have their own, I guess, unique style to them and their own um, unique feature. So you can definitely, you know, get a piece of certain markets. So it's just, you know, if you can just find your own spin on it, then yeah, go for it. But do your research for sure. Yeah, no, those are some, just yeah. some good points. You know, I was just curious if you thought there was anything that should be avoided, but uh, it sounds like as long as you're able to create something that's at least a little bit unique and different um, and of good quality, then, you know, why not? You can create a game app or, a, you know, anything else um, and can probably still do well. Um, so let's move on just a little bit away from apps and talk about your blog a little bit. Um, you know, who's the blog for and uh, why should everybody be reading it? Um, the, the blog was kind of started just as a um, like a personal development blog because I had been interested in it for so many years and I wanted to to talk about personal development. And, and I wanted it's, it's kind of a blog to help people get unstuck from life and and they want to get more out of it. Um, you know, I, I write to help people perform better in their personal and their business lives, you know, and. 
I want to be able to help people and inspire people to to do more and to get more out of their lives. Um, I talk a little bit about my experience on there, about my my failures, my lows, and and lessons I've learned from them. And um, I'm you know I also talk about my iPhone app. So um, I, moving on forward, I definitely want to talk more about entrepreneurship and developing different streams of income and and things like that. So um, it's yeah, that's basically the 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 gist of my my blog sounds very interesting i think it's a blog that uh my listeners my readers would be very interested in so um and is that the best place to get a hold of you or at least to follow along with you is it sure um it's a get busy living blog.com so get busy living blog.com and uh now maybe you can give us a brief insight into what does this next year for benny sue hold uh as far as what do you have planned? What do you plan on accomplishing this year? Um, yeah, um, I definitely want to do more apps. I definitely want to. I mean, I have the experience in, in, to, in creating apps, so I have two now. Um, after these two, I want to start getting, getting uh, into games because games are really where the money is to be made in the app store. I mean, if you look at the top 25 games or top 50, um, I'm sorry, uh, apps in the app store, a majority of them are going to be games. So I definitely want to get into games after that, and um, you know I'm hoping by the end of the year I have at least um, five apps in the App Store, if not more. Um, and uh, see, and and also just growing my blog and and writing and um, you know just networking and meeting interesting people and traveling and things, <laughs> things like that. So a lot of different things, but my main focus will definitely be on apps. Very cool. No, that's good. And um, any other sort of last piece of advice for those interested in maybe creating iPhone apps that you haven't already covered that maybe you'd like to mention? Yeah. Um, let's see. I would say if you want to get to get into iPhone apps, um, definitely keep things in perspective. So, you know, I, you know, I had some amazing success the first month of with my app, but you know, don't think that's typical. I mean, that's very, very atypical. So, um, and, and certainly don't get into, you know, the app business if you think you're going to be able to retire from one app because that's not possible. But now if you have like, you know, many, many apps, then yeah, it's possible to make that your business. Um, if you're starting out, I would say keep your app simple. You know, don't go um, creating this really complex feature laden app. Keep it simple because you're going to be learning a lot from your first app. Um, I knew this other developer who outsourced um, his work, and his first app, I think he's told me it cost like $500, and it was just like this hula girl um, with different backgrounds. And the reason he told me he did that was just because he wanted to test it out and experience what it was like to get an app from idea to the app store. And it, you know, it was a great idea because I guess he had the money to spend to to invest in that. And, and also, it's a great way to find the right kind of developer, too, because um, if you don't want to spend, you know, you know, five thousand dollars on your first app and then hire the developer and then find out, you know, halfway through that they're that they're not, you know, doing the work that they promised. So um, start off small, definitely start off small, start off simple, uh, keep your expectations realistic. Um, you know, I think it's like, you know, it's like the 80 20 rule, I think, you know, 20% of the apps make 80% of the money. So it's 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 hard to get, you know, you're not going to be making Angry Bird level type money, but you can certainly um, make, you know, a little bit of money at least on the side if your app, you know, sort of has hit this right market and you have this, you know, engaged user base. So it's definitely possible. So um, start off small, start off simple. Don't get too crazy because if you get too crazy, your costs are going to start off so high. So um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, it's going to be what, maybe a thousand, maybe $2,000 for your first app. I would say, I know for mine, it was 1900. Um, I'm doing an app now. It's costing me 6,000 for one and the other one's costing me about 3000. So that just gives you an idea of what it might cost to get an app developed these days. Yeah, no, that's great that you can throw out some numbers there as well to let people be aware of that. But Excellent advice there uh, as far as starting off small. I think that mm -hmm. is a great point that we didn't cover here that 
um, is sort of the same advice that I offer people when they're thinking about creating a, a website, for example, that um, you can read and study and try to learn um, all day long, but it isn't until you really sort of get your feet wet and actually jump in and try something out that you really learn. And so if you're able to do that with an iPhone app, um, you can sort of jump through all the hoops that you need to and learn the entire process from start to finish. And if you can mm -hmm. do that on a uh, lower investment or a smaller app to start with, that's really you know, probably a great way to go. And then um, take the lessons that you learned and perhaps move on to bigger and better things from there. Absolutely. I mean, that's a, you know, I would definitely advise that to, um, to anyone because, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, a, you know, it's going to cost some money to get started. It's, it's not a, um, it's not cheap, but if you do it right and you start off small, you're going to learn a lot from your first app. And then you can take that, like you said, and put it into your next app and make it even better. Very good. Benny, overall, I appreciate your time so much. I'm going to let you go here. You provided some great words of wisdom to everybody out there listening that is potentially interested in either creating an iPhone app or overall, I think we've provided some great just general business advice that people can apply into either their online business, offline business, or whatever it is that they might be doing. So again, if you want to follow along with what Benny Sue is doing, you can go over to GetBusyLivingBlog.com. Thank you so much, Benny. Thank you, Spencer. I had a good time. And if anyone has any questions about app or app development or just want to say hi, yeah, definitely reach out to me through my blog. I'd be happy to hear from you or your readers. Great. Thank you again, Benny. I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you, Spencer. Thanks.